Okay, so the first question that I want to throw at you, and you will just be doing it one after the other. Um, the first question that I want to ask is, what's the one word that best describes your background? The one word that describes your background and why? Um, good morning, church. Um, okay, so I will say that the one word that best describes my background, yeah, is, I will just say grace. Because, uh, you know, so I would not say that my childhood was like bad, bad and bad, but um, by the grace of God, it was good. And at the same time, um, growing up at some point in my life was very crazy. Very, very crazy. So um, from since when I was born till I was like 16, everything, you know, you see, um, I, I was still under my parents and um, everything. So then my mom passed at the age of 16. I was in SS3 then. So it really affected me, you know, because my mom was the headmistress of the school at that time. And... Um, so it was just like everywhere, like it was crazy. So I, I, I didn't get over it. In fact, even at this age, <laughs> you know, still, but, but thank God for grace. Because after that, then everything just, you know, was just like crazy. But um, I wouldn't be where I am today, even not for the grace of God. I would have been maybe smoking with some friends or maybe going to club, drinking and doing some stuff because I had friends like that. You, you, you get me? So it's just the grace of God that has been sustaining me and, the, and, and with the help of the people that God had placed over me. So I would just say the grace of God. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for being that very real for us. All right. Let's have it. Okay. Um, so one word that best describes my background, I would say is intentional. And uh, you asked why. Uh, the reason is um, I've, I look back at um, how I grew up where I am now, the things I do, everything that makes up my person, my experiences. And uh, I think God was very intentional about it. It didn't feel like it many times. You know, it just felt like I was going through stuff. But I think it was very intentional. So the word intentional describes it. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, real quick, because we don't have time. If you can just like one minute or thereabout um, to paint us a picture of you four years ago and you today like a before and after so you just paint us a picture of you four years ago and you today okay let me just go um so four years ago very interesting i was i i was in this church i was in the headstone church um i'd not gotten a job i'd not worked anywhere outside um in a corporate world uh you would say i i was young uh very naive I uh, thought I knew some stuff that I did not know. And I think I was just a very green, very green somebody. Um, I didn't know so much. And then, so myself now, um, I, I'd really like to say that um, being in this space has really helped because I, I dare say that there is no young person that can be under Dr. Chris's grace and not, not stretch. <laughs> you just have to stretch. I've been stretched in a lot of... Um, directions, the things that I'm doing now, and not if someone had told me four years ago that I would be doing those things now, I would argue. Um, so I think the, the before is even just very obvious. If I show you a picture of me four years ago and now, you will not believe it. So let's just leave it at that. <laughs> okay, Matthew. Uh, um, four years ago, you know, I never thought I would be in this space that I am. And I think four years ago, that was when I joined Hype Church. So... Um, then I, I was doing some things I, I mean i've been a teacher let me just say like almost all my life so since when i finished secondary school i i, I dived into teaching then later into english diction you get so but when i came to this church I, I um there were things that i didn't know that i could do so this church reshaped me so if you check um four years ago there was little that i could do but this, um, you know, now looking forward, there are things that I can do now that I wouldn't expect um, the four year ago me to be able to do now. You understand? So, I mean, there's a sporadic change, you know, in, 
<laughs> Mary, I'll beat you. <laughs> so there is, you know, you, and you, I mean, everyone can tell. I mean, I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet, but I was, I'm not in that space anymore. You get mm. All right. Okay. So real quick, Matthew, let me just quickly push this at you. What role, as a creative person, what role did hype play in helping you become who you are today? Ah, <laughs> major role. <laughs> I played a major role because I wouldn't have seen myself um, doing photography. Mm. You understand? I wouldn't have seen myself maybe one day doing a voiceover to a video that, that hype wants to put on their social media space. You know, I wouldn't have seen myself doing so many things. So when the opportunity came, I, I, I was just like, you know, I like to explore a lot. So it was through exploration that I knew that photography was, you know, my thing. I started with cinematography under, under Pastor Emmanuel's tutelage then. And, but then I was just like, man, you know, the teaching was very fine and everything. I was learning a lot. But then I started, I just um, ventured into photography, started taking nature pictures and stuff and all. And um, then people started telling me that, ah, Omo, Matthew, these pictures are great. I think you should dive. Then I started exploring. I went to YouTube, learned so many things. But the major, major, major role was from hype. I, I, I've really learned a lot. All right. The same question for you. Anthony. All right. Um, so what role has hype played in... Um, I, I'd like to say that, you know, being in the hype space came with having to solve a lot of problems. Um, I mean, till tomorrow. And... I never saw myself as a creative person, that's just the honest truth. I just felt like I was just someone who maybe had a way of getting things done. Um, so you know how you begin to grow or develop some certain skills and you were not even aware that these skills are sellable? And that's one thing that, you know, Hype majorly did. Um, so, of course, today I, I am a graphic designer and that came because I just got tired of the fact that we were struggling with graphics and all of all that, and I decided that, look, go and learn this. I tried to learn graphic design three times before I finally learned it. Wow. I kept on feeling. Uh, you know, but, you know, being in the hype space, um, as a person, I just, I think that's just it. Solving problems. I, we had a lot of problems that we needed to solve, a lot of holes we needed to plug, and it just needed to be done. So you know how, by working, you develop stuff. That, oh. That's just All right, all right, okay. Um, <clears throat> because of time, I'm just going to move to the last questions that I'll be, I'll be asking you guys. Um, and you just do that. One, one minute. What are you most grateful about Hype? What are you most grateful about? Well, I've always been saying it. Hype is a family. Hype is not just a church. It's not just coming here to worship God. I, I, you know, when I, when I um, came to this church, I did not plan it. It, it was God that orchestrated my steps into this church. So, that, you know, and, and I knew that then that this is where I'm supposed to be. I knew then that this is where I'm supposed to be. So that's why it's, I'm, I'm not even in a rush, like, okay, oh yeah, oh yeah, go, uh, you know, this church is not shaking the con, oh yeah, go to another church. No, because there's a plan and there's a purpose why God made me come to this place, you know, and... Hype is a family. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm grateful for. All right. You're grateful for the family that you have found in Hype. Let's hear you, sir. Okay. Um, so, unlike Matthew, you know, when Hype started, I think I'm, I'm like an ancestor, if you would call me that. <laughs> um, <laughs> when Hype started, Pastor Oche would remember, I did not knew. Like, you know, Matthew knew. I didn't, I didn't even want to be a part. Because, you know, I felt like I had a lot on my plate already, and I didn't want to get involved with this, but somehow he just roped me in. And right now, things I'm grateful for about Hype, just to count a few, is the most important thing is, is the gift of people. I, I count it as a gift. It's, um, it's not something I can place a value on. I, I look around me, I look at people who have become my support system, and I see that if not for Hype, I mean, take, away, take Hype away from my life. It's only got to... It's only God that knows what a picture of, you know, what it will look like. So mm. the gift of people and the gift of leadership. And also, finally, the gift to be able to make mistakes and grow. I think that's it. All right. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. For I believe that us. we have all been able to learn one or two things. from. We have a lot of hype, hype men and women. <laughs>
Okay, so Victor is a banker, works in a bank. And um, we also have here Gideon, who is a tech IT person. And uh, when it comes to the codes and the programming, it's the guy. Okay, so real quick, can you just give us uh, a little bit of a backstory? You know, a few words. Your background, tell us about your background in a few words. Let's start with Victor. Praise God. Um, okay, um, so one word that described me, I would say believe. 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 Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, over the years I've come to realize that, um, over the years I've come to realize that um, man, human, tends to gravitate towards um, the condition of your mind. So I just paint a literal example. If you want to buy a phone and um, you don't have money and you say in the next three months I want to buy a phone, one way or the other you will be tilted towards where you are going to get that money. So that's how the mind works. So belief system has um, been my story all my life. From my secondary school to university, in university I heard a lot of stuff. You will finish and um, there's no job and all this, but my belief system said no. So I conditioned my mind. So that's why I say belief. Mm, all right, thank you. That's insightful. Gideon, how about you? Okay, so um, for me, it's faith. Mm. Yeah. What? So for me, it's faith. And uh, my background was, um, you know, David said, in sin, my mother conceived me. For me, in prayer, <laughs> my mother. So we grew up with prayers, and that, that was typically my, my background. All right, okay. All right, so quickly paint us a picture of you four years ago and you today. A before and after picture of you four years ago and today. Let's start with you, Gideon. Okay, four years ago, I was just preparing to return back from NYC. Um, today, thank God, I'm a software engineer, a senior software engineer. Senior, no, it's <laughs> a senior software engineer. Yeah, a senior software engineer. <laughs> so in the space of four years, you have grown from just being a fresh graduate. Three years, actually. In the space of three years, rather, you've become from a fresh graduate to a senior software engineer. Nice. Um, Victor. Okay, um, four years ago was 2016, 2017. Okay. Um, so, 2017, where was I said? You're asking me. Okay. Um, 2017, I was. Yes, I finished my NYC 2016 also. And um, I started work. I started working, fresh graduate, um, 2017, February, I guess. And, um, but today, well, um, I'm fine. <laughs> so I'm a data analyst. I've come to love that aspect. And um, I'm a junior developer. <laughs> <laughs> so data analyst and junior developer, no, we are all fine. All right. OK, so um, as, a, as a career person, um, what role did I play in helping you become who you are today? Victor. Okay, so um, my first day in this church, that was 2017. Yes, 2017. Um, I heard a message, um, and it was around maximizing life. So when I moved to Lagos, I've been to so many churches. I was going, I was trying to get where I'm going to stay. But when I got here and I heard that message about uh, maximizing your life, I, I said that, okay, this is, um, this is in line with my belief system. I want to maximize, my, maximize myself. So, and outside that, um, growing up in my career, I, I've come to look up to a lot of people in this church, especially in the Hive Church, because um, they are way ahead. They are way ahead. So I look up to them. I follow their footsteps. I don't want to make the same mistake they made in the past. So, um, it has been a smooth on right for me all the years, from right. learning to development. Right, so Hype has provided you with the right mentorship to help you grow. Yeah, exa Kidding. exactly what I was going to say, actually. What I was, what I said was... What he said, what mentorship. Was. Yeah, Hype has a very, very wonderful, effective mentorship system, yes. But for me, um, particularly, particularly in the area of uh, relationship, right, um, and even career, um, I mean, the mentors are, um, they are okay. Okay, our mentors are okay. What are you most grateful about in 
high. So for me, um, the word, the teaching, I remember, so I'm a career person, I have my job, and I also am kind of moving into entrepreneurship because of money, right? And um, one day I said to my, my partner, I said, I wanted to get a license. It's a very big license. It's, you know, it's a very big license. And, and so he was like, are you sure about that? Like, do you understand what you're talking about? And then I felt, I felt really, you know, challenged. And then I came to church that Sunday, I guess, and Dr. Chris was teaching. And that was the point he was like, um, this is the time to, to think big. And I'm like, okay, that, that's, that's it. So the word has been really impactful, not just um, Dr. Chris, but every, every word has been back to back also. Right. Victor, what are you most grateful about in I? Okay, so um, most of the world, because sometimes um, you just see someone share it and you'll be like, okay, so this same thing I've been reading since all these years, the same thing is inside the same verse. And also the people, yes, um, the people that's helped me, because growing up, um, I'm very used to myself, very used to myself, but um, one way I have taught me to come out of my space and um, relate with people and it's actually helping me in my workspace. So I learned that here and it's helping me grow here. Okay, all right. And then um, let's also just um, tell us about your first day in life, Gideon. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I cannot really remember my first day in hype. But I, I remember my earliest, the earliest time I remember <laughs> in Hype um, was, um, I, I, I don't know exactly what we were doing, but I remember the creativity. The creativity was very appealing, it was very attractive. And I'm like, the young people are doing this, <laughs> right? So um, the creativity was what actually attracted me. I can't remember exactly what we were doing, but I remember that. The creativity. That creativity. All right. How about you? Oh, you're also an artist, though. <laughs> well, um, we started together. <laughs> so, I was, um, I was there the first service, and it was, blew my mind, because from my church, from my family church, I know what um, youth church used to look like, but it was a different view, a different, a different everything, so it was wow. Yeah. We started together. All right. And um, do you have any last words for us? Any last uh, advice, tips, and guides, Victor? Okay, um, <laughs> I would say first of all, don't let anybody despise your youth. And um, don't let anybody talk you down that something is too big for you to achieve. Nothing is too big for you to achieve. All right, how about you, Gideon? Um, relationship is key. We, you need people. You really need people. Yes. Okay. Relationship is key. And don't let anybody tell you that you come here. Thank you, guys. Do, does anybody, hold on, hold on, just a second. Does anybody have questions or you have one or two things to say individually now as a hype that you feel like you want to talk about that hype has helped you through? Do we have anybody that have something to say, to ask them a question or you have one or two things to also add as your own testament? Nobody. Thank you, guys. Please, can we appreciate this guy so much? Thank you, guys, so much. All right. Um, let me just come back to the front. Okay. Um, so, like we've heard, one of the key things that I need us to take out from this, I would also share a little bit of my own experience as well. My background was very, very humble. All right. Thank you, Sajon. So, I'll say my own background was um, discipline. Um, you know when you, um, you are with parents that both are from, you know, the deeper life kind of parents where um, they tell you what to do per time and um, when you do things that are wrong, you know that you get beaten or something like that. That's from my mom, basically. So um, I'm a very playful person, but I have a um, limit to whatever I do, you understand? Because you know that if you exceed this limit, they are going to come and beat you, you know. So it was discipline for me. All right, all right, John. So, um, paint us a quick picture of you four years ago and now okay. today. Uh, four years ago, I already started my um, fashion um, stuff. I started already four years ago. And I remember um, 
The first client I made my um, outfit for was Dr. Chris. I could remember very well. Yeah. So um, that happened. I think there was one time we had our FOT where Toby was the MC or that. Uh, so the outfit pastor wore. Pastor just gave me the money. I was like, just go and do something. That was half time. I, so the first person that ever believed in me, aside from my, aside from my family, was Dr. Chris. Um, so um, since then, it's been one level to another to another. Um, where I am now, um, if I was told I was going to do venture into fashion, I would say it's a lie. Trust me, I would say it's a lie because I remember the time my mommy had them. There was a machine in our house. My mom late sister passed and mommy had to sell the machine. So I was not even thinking of going into fashion, basically. It was just, I would say, should I say frustration? It was, uh, yeah, because I was, I was high do, not doing anything at that time. So I just, my aunt just told me, come do this. And I entered, I went to go and do it. And I loved what I was doing. I was somebody that I don't like sitting without doing anything. I want to make money. I love money so much. I can do anything for money, legit thing for money. You understand? So when I ventured into it, first the passion was there. I loved what I was doing. You understand? So half, after that, uh, then the money started coming. And John, or four years ago, if I bring the picture like Dio said, and look at me now, seriously. It's... All right. Okay, so love. What role has hype play in helping you um, unravel with clean for you? Okay, so um, hype actually gave me a very open platform that I'm sure I wouldn't have gotten outside because I had no qualification, I had no experience, I had nothing. So four years ago, I didn't have a home. I was staying in church, I think. I didn't have a job, I had nothing. But then through the years, we came up with yes, you know, all of those events. And then my boss then, she was always misbehaving. If you misbehave, you are going on suspension. So one of those days, she just suspended me for like one week, no pay. So that day I was home, I was just upset. So I'm like, okay. They've been saying, you know, do something, solve a problem, think, think, think. So that day I was just thinking. And then I was like, okay, what can I do? What solution can I bring? Then I remember, so I've stayed with several people and they all used me like their house helps and house gifts. So I'm like, okay, I can pick this up. I can clean, like, I can scrub you. I can clean very well. So I'm like, okay, let's start from there. That was how I began with clean for you, of you know, cleaning people's houses, do your laundries and all of that. And then another day, so I'm like, okay, what else can I do? And then I thought of recycling. So I'm like, how if I go and be picking trash on the road because I want to sell them? But I was like, okay, I started it. One day, it was raining, I dressed up, I went out. I started picking plastic bottles you know, compressing them, and then I'll sell them out. And gradually, I started getting some people who buy them. But Corona came, and you know, but then that has been, you know, the platform thinking. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, um, that's, that's really quite interesting. <laughs> who could have believed that I find it like this? <laughs> okay, um, okay, John, tell us about your first day at Hype. How was the experience like? If you can remember, can you remember? Wow, like, yes, I can okay. remember. Like Dio said, uh, we are the ancestors of hype, basically. <laughs> because I remembered when um, Paul C just came to meet me and, like, I started a youth church. And I was like, okay, youth church. And the first experience was amazing because this place was packed full. Like, it was really, really amazing. Seriously. Like, imagine, I've always wanted this. You know, like I said, where I was coming from. You know, where you just go, stay one place, you clap your hands and all that. So there was no freedom of expression, you understand? So the first um, service in Hype, I could express myself the way I want to. I could express myself, and I enjoyed it. All right. Okay. So, um, Love, what are you most grateful about for Hype, in Hype, rather? Okay. I am, I am very, very grateful for the people, yeah, especially... Um, people who I have worked with directly, like Dio, they've really, really, you know, helped me. So I think one of those days, I think I was singing for SLC, and then I got a message later that, you know, MD was proud of me. That I was like, ah, you know, I've grown so much, you know. So the growing process, I'm just grateful for the platform. Thank you, Hype. And thanks to the Headstone Church for birthing Hype, you know, so... Thank you. All right. Okay. So, any last word for your fans, your lovers, admirers, or people that want to just chuck them out inside your matter? You know, any last words? Well, um, last words. Stay where you are. Be planted. You know, be rooted here. Stay with us. We have a lot to give to you. God bless you. John, let's hear your last words. So, I'll say um, 
if you are in hype, you are in extreme short hype, per se, uh, and you are not doing anything, uh, you are making the efforts of the um, leaders to be useless, seriously. Because you can't be in a church like this, in a church like this, and not get your hands busy doing something, seriously. Nobody um, wants to be friends to a lazy person, basically. So if you are here, be here. And when you are here, learn. Bring yourself down. Let them teach you. Seriously. There is grace in this house. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. You know, so hearing it from the young persons that we are under God and by his grace trying to raise, you know, so that the purpose of his kingdom can be fostered. It will be foolhardy that um, it comes, our parents were able to pass them down to us and we can't, you know, push it any further. I'd like to hear from your perspective what your testimonies working in the hype space in the past years have been. Mentor Ruth, you can start. Hello? This is a conspiracy. Why they you were can talking? see the time. Testimonies of working with these young people. Why they were talking, why the young ones were talking, I was just asking myself those same questions. I didn't know that we were going to be brought out just like that. Um, one of the beautiful things that um, Hype has done is that it has given me a platform to show my skill, my, my gifts. And that's the gift of care. Wow. It, 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 it helps. I don't know. I feel good. I feel happy when I'm able to reach out. And, and I'm able, I, I think I'm a kind of person who reads people. I, once I see, I tell you, and then they begin to laugh. So it, it, it helps me when I talk. And then the person says, oh, mommy, were you there? You know? So it has given me a platform to be able to show the care that I know I have. And to show to people that really appreciate it. And then another thing too is, there is a difference between being a leader and having people to lead. So that I'm a leader, I also have people to lead. I think that's, that's a gift. So thank you for being there, for being the platform for which I'm able to show the care and then to lead. God bless you. So the embedded treasure of pastoral care from her and in her has been brought out by y'all. We render praise unto God. Mama Mo. Praise God. Okay, I think for me it's it's equally um, similar. It's a platform. It's an opportunity to be able to not only um, learn because we're all learning. We know learning is a lifelong process. But you know how, unless people draw from you, having people who would draw, who need what you have, it maximizes what you have and it makes you. Um, appreciate what you really know and what you have. So that's what this has provided for me. So many times um, I'm speaking with people who have different um, issues or they just need advice. And then I'm, be, I'm able to pull from the experience I've had over the years and I see the relevance, I see the importance. I see, oh, okay, so this is why this happened. You know how scripture says that you comfort others with the same comfort where with you have been comforted. That is how it happens. So because I've been able to go through some things, when somebody else is going through it, I can smile and tell you, don't worry about it. Everything, everything will be all right. It will come to pass. Okay, so if I heard her rightly, um, the hype space seemed to have been for her um, some sort of a quality assurance measure, you know, so that um, uh, uh, um, he has um, qualified the grace that you carry because there are people to whom you can you know release them on we're in a praise unto god for that can we put our hands together for her um on the final note we are birthing we are birthing some kind of a new generation um we have three younger mentors in this space and i will want we have mentor Oge, we have mentor Dio. We have a um, mentor, Daniel. I, I would want that you, um, in a minute each, you know, I would want that you, as a way also of being grateful to being able to serve in this space, I, I would want that you um, share a word or two with these ones. 
experientially. Because you see that we are laughing here. The work is never easy. We have times that we want to drop it and be like, you know what? My own alone is even too much. What's all these things? But somehow we are able to go on. I'd like that you drop words of admonition and of encouragement for this ones. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so um, one of the things I would say is the work of the leader is never done. So even when everyone has packed their bags and gone, you still have, you still have work to do. You have to learn how to strengthen and encourage yourself when there is no one there to do that for you. Because you have people who are, who are relying on you. There are things have to go like they say it, the show must go on these things have to be done so um, you have to learn how to encourage yourself you have to be committed to lifelong development studying so um, you are told you are going to take the word don't just because you are told you are going to take the word you now start trying to read your bible make constant study be a lifelong process so when you are called at the drop of a hat you have something to share that's how it's supposed to be you teach from your overflow, not from what you're learning. If you're not full, you can't give what you don't have. So know how to encourage yourself. Know that the work is never done. Know that it will be a stretching moment. It will be, there will be times you would want to just drop it all and say, you know what, it have do. But you have to go on. He that um, gave you this work, he will strengthen you. He will um, comfort you and God is a reward. I think that is one of my strong encouragement in all of this. Yes. The Bible says God is not unfaithful to forget your work and leave all blood. Praise Thank God. you so much. Mama Ruth. Okay. She has said almost everything. But two things. Um, as a mentor, you have to be a people person. Don't just be a mentor that occupies space. Be someone that your mentee can approach and talk to you. And one of the ways to do that is you have to bond with your people through prayer. If it's possible, and it's always possible, have the names of those you are leading, because that's where it starts, and then pray for them consistently, constantly, and be there for them when they need you. And as much as possible, you are not just to teach them or to, le or to lead them, you can also learn from them. Of course, as your mentors, we learn a lot from you. Like he always says, the generation differs. Ah. So we are learning a lot. But sometimes there are things that we see, you know, we're not so used to certain things uh, growing up. So when we see this colored hair and then men plating hair, you know, it's normal. But we are also learning anyway. So as we learn from you, you are also learning from us. Thank you very much. We we'll learn by the seconds. Put your hands together for these mentors as they take their seats. And I want us all, okay, um, our papa in the house has something to say to us. Thank you, sir. Put your hands together for Dr. Chris Williams. Okay, praise God. Um, what happened here this morning really gladdens my heart to uh, see and know that we have such empowerment going on in the space that we have here. It's amazing. 